Hi there. Um, I'm doing an experiment to see if I get better sound by using a headset. So we shall see. Um, I have a journal from September for you. We're getting more current with them. This one is from 910. The first journal of that day, the Mayan day, was seven night. And it's got two yummy links that go with it. I hope you'll click over. Um, they're both Abraham Hicks and they're both quite good. All right. Life in 3D is so darn strange. It's mystifying. The contrast in beliefs and ideas among us keeps things exciting, though. Oh my God, what a challenge it is, rising in consciousness in the midst of this crazy soup, huh? The vast variety in manifestations of all the people on the globe makes for any sort of experience one could desire. Well, almost. It's a great place to be, actually even though at times it seems it will defeat us and bring us into despair and sheer soul exhaustion. Somehow it doesn't. We can shift out of that. It helps that we're source in manifestation, no doubt. Only it's so crazy that so few of us know this and fewer yet claim it, at least for now. I love watching that change. You know, right about now, I think I could compete with the external craziness of the planet with just what's going on inside. I'm deeply glad for the detachment that's growing ongoing, for without it, there would likely be despair. There's just nothing to which one can hold for any sort of stability at all, at least not that I've seen. Lack of stability in one's affairs and relationships is one thing, and it's intense enough, yet lack of any sort of anchor or stability in identity, well, that's unspeakable. I don't know what to say about it that would begin to convey what it feels like. But at this point, I know so many of you are right there with me, so you get it. At this point, <clears throat> I have to say thank God for non-attachment and all the great teachers and speakers of that. Letting go, such a familiar theme, and yet it helps keep me sane. Now, not necessarily mind sane, but heart sane at least, and I value that far above anything mind has to offer at this point. It seems all the snarls I untangle within were created or compounded by mind. The poor deer just trying to do its best. Not that I blame mind, for I don't. Like everyone else around me, I, I do feel it simply does its best. It's such a, a huge conglomeration of things that goes together to bring us to the result of our current life here in 3D. Like the whole thing with desires, it's not so much the desires that are at fault, it's our attachment to them and to the things to which they point. Absent that attachment, life is much better lived and more easily, fruitfully enjoyed. Desires are normal 3D things, quite natural to body and to mind. Our misstep, if there was one, was in believing them to have any real importance. But they don't, at least not in my world guess I have to stop here and clarify the I to which I refer for 
sometimes it's the outer persona and other times it's the true divine identity in whom I find no desires. Desires are tricky things for they're most often viewed from a perspective of not having what we want. We discover that only intensifies, it increases the lack since that is the focus of attention. It brings us more of the same, not such a desired result. Desirelessness may be a bit like thoughtlessness, a state desired by many but infrequently attained, and yet the fulfillment of both is present within, already whole and complete. Source, which is our true inner identity, obviously contains both all that is, all of cosmos, and all that isn't too. We could call that emptiness or the void. In the presence of such wholeness, such completeness, where is there room for lack? I guess it's just another one of those manifestations contained by Source. Now, I can answer that in 3D. This is the place we come to experience the impossible. Impossible to those in spirit and in full possession of all of our divine faculties. We come into the, the backwards realm of 3D for a lot of things, but often enough for the wild wackiness of what is possible to create here. Are we nuts? Well, maybe a little, and maybe that helps. I've got to tell you that being older is my cup of tea. I'm truly loving it just for the broad range of experiences it brings. And these tie in so neatly with other life experiences in other realms, other climes and times, and it all fits together so neatly it never ceases to amaze. The more I've let go and come to trust life, the better it's gotten for me. We're all so powerful, and yet we mostly don't know it. How's that for backwards, huh? It's phenomenal that we could somehow have convinced ourselves that we can't do what we can, can't have what we can, can't go where we desire, etc. Now, that's a feat that is simply amazing, and one we'll be laughing about one day soon. Not that there's time, of course, not in reality, but there is surely the experience of it here. My world, as I've been sharing lately, is in the midst of falling apart, and yet I find I'm somehow enjoying that. Yeah, backwards again makes no logical sense, but then one of my favorite letting goes is the mind and its linear perspectives. It's easy enough to get into them anytime we want, but oh, so much more fun to get beyond them. On discovering that we're all really multi-dimensional, well, that was almost like heaven right there. No more limits. That was a major freedom from the sense of limitation, something to savor and enjoy. I continue to find that all of my so-called limits are self-imposed. Not that I know how or why or anything like that. Still, it has also slimmed down the confusion significantly to simply stick with the what of things forsaking all thought about the how or the why. <laughs> you might give it a try sometime, even just for a vacation from mine of a few minutes. 
it's a funny mixture of things we can change and things we just need to accept. Self-observing has taught me that resistance to what is can really play havoc with our enjoyment of life. In fact, it's one of the main culprits in our feelings of lack and limitation. Simple resistance, non-acceptance. And yet, we weren't ever told about such things, much less taught how to navigate amongst them growing up. This is one of the pleasures of long life in the body the chance to experience such things often enough that the patterns begin to reveal themselves, that the puzzle pieces start to fit. And I know I'm not the only one feeling that way. I take great joy in growing older, in fact, in spite of the ridiculous way youth and possibly false beauty are marketed to us. Stuff and nonsense. I'm glad to have the free will to make other choices. How to overcome resistance? That's funny, we're resisting resistance there. But I hear some wondering. Well, seems to me the best way to start is with a simple acceptance. Once we learn to accept and just let be, and sometimes even welcome whatever comes in on the now here moment, life starts to improve immensely. Do stay out of mind with this though. It doesn't mean you've got to love that which makes you feel miserable or less than perfect. Not at all. It's far deeper than that, for that would be a linear or 3D way to view it. So let's go deeper, shall we? Start out being who you really are. The divine. Remind yourself. Center in that. Now, let's look at it again. What does it look like from here? From now here, of course. Good old self and now here in heart. So, along comes a feeling that you don't welcome. What to do? How do you greet it? In the past, we would have found some way to run away from it, seeking some sort of distraction, something to make us feel better. We wouldn't have wanted to spend any time with this feeling at all. Well, okay, so that's what was. Now, so what? Hmm? The now here doesn't make room for that. That's the past. As the Divine One we are, we don't choose that perspective. We don't bring the past into anything, only the now here. Can you imagine the freedom, the purity, the exhilaration of having no past to lug around with you at all times? No past. Imagine that. That takes one major crutch for feeling bad away from us all, right away, just like that. One fell swoop, no past. And oh my God, for some who get the sense of this, you might even enjoy an hour's meditation on having no past. Feel into the implications, the immensity of that. Whole different perspective. Meanwhile, we discover just some of the terrible, as in awesome, power of self and now here in heart. When you carve away your past, you lose a whole lifetime of excuses, 
of reasons, of dodges, and painful experiences. You also lose the distraction from the now here presented by memories of past joys and accomplishment, happy feelings, spiritual things. Well, some might not want to lose all of that. I'm sure the instant reaction of many would be to ditch the tough stuff but keep the good stuff going forward. Okay, let's look at that. For I think we've just uncovered another layer of resistance, of unwillingness to own the stuff we previously labeled as bad. You see the resistance at work there? Every time we spot resistance in action, in our awareness, let's give ourselves a gold star. Seriously, this is powerful stuff. Most people wander through life never really knowing why they feel as they do, why they're not happy, why nothing ever seems to work. I'd suggest that resistance is at the heart, the core of all of that, and just for starters, no need to overwhelm. Self, only self and now here in heart. Let's stay with that a while more and set her down. Get back into knowing or at least believing in your own native divinity. Let's own that. Just set the intent and have no concern about how you're manifesting it. That would be mind who has no business in this work. When looked at from heart perspective, your life can be seen to rather quickly sort itself out into these contrasting sets of experiences we've been taught to label as good or bad. Now, we've come a long way since we were taught that, so Let's re-educate our vision, our mind, and take a more flexible perspective on the whole of it. When we look again, but from source perspective, we can see the beauty of the balance between the light and the more dark-seeming experiences we've had. Source also looks with a view to see the divine balance that is or could be present there. I'd like to suggest that rather than just desiring to experience the supposedly good things, what Source sees more value in is balance, capital B to denote its divine. When we make the shift away from resisting the bad stuff and desiring only the good, which, as anyone over about age 20 knows is to be Don Quixote, tilting at impossible windmills, we fall into a different perspective entirely. We begin to realize Hey, Source doesn't label things like that. Doesn't label them at all. Unless you count good, better, and best, or something a lot like that. There is no resistance of any kind within Source. Source welcomes it all. Are you ready for that? Some of you were wondering what no resistance would look like would feel like. Well, now it turns out that you've gotten the whole complete experience right there on board wherever you go. It may seem to be hidden deeply within, but that's just another illusion, a belief. How could that be? What seems deeply hidden is not. Instead, that feeling is an indication that you've got some beliefs in the way. 
It's your very own beliefs that are doing all of this supposed hiding of things. Not life, not source, who sees you as completely unlimited, 100%. Take that in. Let it sink down inside. How does it feel? Any sensing that you don't have it can be seen as an indicator of beliefs that are ready to go. If they weren't ready to go, you wouldn't likely be sensing them that way. Now stay in heart with this, for mind will surely take you right out of it. It may feel a bit strange, but don't be afraid. Remember, always remember just who you are when you're tempted to fear. And remember, only self and now here in heart, which amounts to the same thing. Good, better, and best. These are the ways, or linguistic pointers to such, the ways that Source sees everything. To Source, nothing is negative. Now, stay out of mind. Remember, you have spent perhaps your entire life, until now, gallivanting with mind. Give yourself the grace of these few moments to stay out of that, to just ignore it. It'll be there for you when you return. But if you indulge it now, you quite lose the threat of the heart journey that's here for you. The price of staying in heart is ignoring the overtures of mind, for the most part. Let mind's thoughts be like links you don't choose to click. And it really is that easy once you get the hang of it. You get some breathing space. And quit identifying with the mind. And any fear you feel, well, that will quite likely just be mind in this unaccustomed place where it doesn't know what to do. It will survive. You deserve some vacation time from the constant demanding control of your mind. Mind is the one that's been taught to judge every experience you have, every thought, and those of others as well as good or bad, desirable or not. Source doesn't choose to view life through that lens, nor does the real you. So, to continue your mind vacation, Drop all thought of good and bad, right and wrong, light and dark, and all the rest of the dualistic soup. And just set it to the side for now. Again, it'll be there if you still want it on your return. That's a major pair of tinted glasses we just removed. All of that judgmental response to life. All of that resistance. Now, life simply won't look the same. When we get rid of judgment, we get rid of the main underpinning of resistance. For why would you resist something that was only good, better, or best? You wouldn't, of course. So don't. Keep enjoying your mind vacation as you watch all the resistance just fade away on the breeze. Now you're actually welcoming life, all that it brings into your now here instead of only certain stuff. And now that you welcome it all, you discover the hidden blessings and benefits and all that that you resisted before. Suddenly you just can't find anything terrible in it at all. And you begin to see what a vast blessing simply everything is. Yes, even the awful stuff that seems to hurt. It won't look that way anymore. And I'm not saying you'll never be hurt again until we clear out all those beliefs Hurt is one of the ways that 
we're brought to see something that we've been resisting. Now this is a major shift in your vision to be sure. It's something you might want to center down and go back over a few times, but not with the mind. That would just defeat the point. Instead, by staying on your mind vacation, or taking many mind vacations as often as you like, you're retraining, reprogramming your mind. You're laying down new connections, new synapses, and they're powerful ones due to their closeness, their resonance with the energies of source. Okay, at some point we have to start heading back, but do stay in heart as long as you can. Keep ignoring, lovingly ignoring mind's offerings, not to judge or condemn it. Just stick with heart. I want you to remember the source choices when you look at things, look at anything, as good, better, or best. There is nothing that is dark or negative at all, even the negative stuff. Instead, it's, it's more like the negative current in electricity. So very necessary for the positive by itself is ineffectual. It takes both, and they are good, better, and best. And that includes you, so no self-judgment or criticism at all. No nitpicking yourself or those you love. Think good, better, and best. Those are my new choices. You'll watch and begin to see all resistance drop from your life. And you'll be a lot better to be around too. Easier for others to enjoy, huh? Self, and now here in heart, is alchemical. It's powerful stuff. The only thing in the way of a massive change in your life, assuming that's what you want, of course, may well be your attachment to the past. Once that is let go, then there's really nothing in the way, no anchor holding you back from adopting the new ways of seeing, the new beliefs. Keep remembering good, better, and best. Let it be a little mantra to remind you to be centered in heart. And that won't be difficult either since your mind won't be able to cope with it and will likely reject it outright as simply making no sense. Well, let that be your joy since it makes it that much easier to do what you wanted to do anyway. Get back into heart. Do you see how all things work in your favor this way? As you self-observe, you'll be able to see how things you previously judged as undesirable were actually bringing blessing to you that you failed to observe, all due to your old set of beliefs and the tendency to judge everything and resist so much of it. That can truly be a thing of the past, my friends. It depends on our willingness to commit to some serious change. A lot of letting go. Those willing to commit will find the fruit of their actions start to sweeten. There will be far fewer rotten apples fall from the tree and those that do fall will be seen to do so for the overall benefit in some magical way. Perhaps it's for the horses or the cattle to enjoy. Namaste. At least for now. I love watching that change. You know, right about now, I think I could compete with the external craziness of the planet with just what's going on inside. I'm deeply glad for the detachment that's growing ongoing 
for without it, there would likely be despair. There's just nothing to which one can hold for any sort of stability at all, at least not that I've seen. The sort of experience one could desire, well, almost. It's a great place to be, actually, even though at times it seems it will defeat us and bring us into despair and sheer soul exhaustion. Somehow it doesn't. We can shift out of that. It helps that we're source in manifestation, no doubt. Only it's so crazy that so few of us know this and fewer yet claim it. That lack of stability in one's affairs and relationships is one thing, and it's intense enough, yet lack of any sort of anchor or stability in identity, well, that's unspeakable. I don't know what to say about it that would begin to convey what it feels like. But at this point, I know so many of you are right there with me, so you get it. At this point, <clears throat> I have to say thank God for non-attachment and all the great teachers. Hi there. Um, I'm doing an experiment to see if I get better sound by using a headset. So, we shall see. Um, I have a journal from September for you. We're getting more current with them. This one is from 910. The first journal of that day, the Mayan day, was 7 night. And it's got two yummy links that go with it. I hope you'll click over. Um, they're both Abraham Hicks, and they're both quite good. All right. Life in 3D is so darn strange. It's mystifying. The contrast in beliefs and ideas among us keeps things exciting, though. Oh my God, what a challenge it is, rising in consciousness in the midst of this crazy soup, huh? The vast variety in manifestations of all the people on the globe makes for any sort